Hi everybody. So um, I'm uh, doing a campaign for a small group of friends and uh, it's um, very much inspired by Harry Potter, um, but it's a very grown up Harry Potter. Um, they, so they're in a magical college and they're helping out one of the uh, professors, and, but they need to find out like who the master werewolf is um, there's some like murder mystery elements. They that, trying to find out who killed one of their friends, um, who um, uh, you know, uh, who the necromancer is, sort of like the Voldemort character who's like behind everything, pulling the strings. Um, but uh, but long story short, I needed some werewolves. I didn't have any werewolves in my collection, so uh, so I'm painting up these um, Malifaux Neverborn Boltungen. I think is what they're called. And uh, they're just some really awesome looking werewolf sculpts. Um, it's kind of crazy how, how complicated they are to put together. Like I feel like weird miniatures, they just, sometimes how complicated they make things. It's like they're justifying their prices by making things like extra complicated, you know? But um, anyways, yeah. Um, but I wanted these guys to look like they had just sort of come out, they're just transforming, and like the moonlight is hitting them, and like it's like they're they're bathed in moonlight while they're uh, while they're transforming. So uh, so anyways, um, yeah, uh, it's a pretty quick paint job. I think I got these guys done in under two hours, more like closer to an hour. It's just like the, the airbrush, you know, made really quick work of them. And then, you know, just some kind of basic stuff, a little bit of washes, a little bit of dry brushing, and, uh, and then call them good. But, uh, but yeah, I could keep going with them, but they're, they're definitely ready for nerd poker. So, uh, so yeah, we'll get on with the painting. So to start with, I'm going to mix up some Vallejo Game Air Imperial Blue and some uh, Cold Gray. And um, these, uh, these colors, the Vallejo Game Air, is, it seems like it's a little bit more opaque than the uh, Model Air. The, uh, the Model Air, you know, you can use it like a filter. You can just um, put it on top of your uh, Xenothal colors or whatever, and then a lot of the paint job will show through. This stuff is a little bit thicker and it's a little bit uh, denser pigments, it seems like. So I'm gonna mix those up and uh, I just want like a nice cool gray, or, like a bluish gray, but I don't want it to look blue. And then I'm gonna add some uh, airbrush thinner to that because it was a little bit thick for my liking. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do like a Zenithal coat over these guys. Uh, just sort of spraying down at like a 45 degree angle, but I want to give them like a good pretty good all-over coverage with this stuff Because um, I want it to look like uh, moonlight So I'm gonna go back over this with the more of the um, Cold gray after but right now I want to kind of put like a blue tint on everything that's gonna be like my mid-tone kind of light source so yeah, I'm just gonna give these guys good like top-down coverage all over with this kind of grayish blue color on top of the black. Now I wanna go back in and uh, do some more lighter highlights so I'm just going to do a little quick change with the airbrush um, and this is my patented uh, quick change formula it's like a combination of Windex and rubbing alcohol I think I'm going to do a video about that later but uh, yeah I'm just going to go in there kind of uh, rub around the paint cup with, a, with a, a paintbrush clean it out a little bit and then I'm going to go back in with more of the um, Game Air Cold Gray and make some more highlights. And uh, this time I'm gonna focus on some areas. I wanna make um, focal points on the, uh, the faces and uh, hands and feet um, because and uh, chest, because that's where I want the fur to be the lightest. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave 
the um, like the backs and like the um, uh, like the a lot of areas kind of lighter. Oh, but I'm also going to use this to create some highlights on their um, their pants because it's kind of like just a nice neutral gray color. And then I'm going to go over those later with a filter to just kind of change their color from a, from a gray scale. Next I'm going to go in with some Vallejo Game Ink Black and some uh, Game Wash Sepia. And uh, the Vallejo Game Ink is pretty dark and opaque. So um, as, a, as a filter, just because I want to like bring out some of the detail in the fur and stuff, uh, I want to bump down that opacity a lot. I just want to kind of use it as a filter to like darken things and make the fur look a little more dirty. Uh, so yeah, this the game game wash is nowhere near as opaque as the game ink is. So I'm just gonna mix those two together. And um, originally I tried to do it about half and half and that was a little too opaque. So I went back later and um, added more of the game wash and it was more like maybe two to three more like two to three game wash to uh, to game ink. So I'm mostly going to put this in, in uh, places like shadows and um, like areas where I want the fur to be a little bit darker. But um, if uh, if you do, you know, put it on top of an area and you don't want it too much on there, you can just kind of smudge it with your finger and then just push it around a little bit or just like take a take your brush and then put a little bit of water in it and like thin it out or you know, just kind of push it around so it doesn't pull in places where you don't want it. But I'm, I'm just gonna kind of use that to like create some shadows in places where I want the shadows and then mostly just gonna leave it off areas where I want highlights. I also ended up using that on the bases too to um, darken those down and add a little bit of contrast into the little, around the, my little fake rocks. Now I'm gonna come in with some Vallejo Game Air Khaki and um, all I want to do is just, uh, I'm, I'm not going to airbrush it. <laughs> I just want to put it on top of the pants and I want to use it like a filter. Um, so I'm not really, I don't want it to be opaque. I just want it to kind of like tint those um, gray colors towards like a, a khaki color. And uh, I'm not worried about getting, you know, good coverage or, um, you know, um, uh, I don't want opaque color. I just want to use it like a like a filter, like a mask to put over there uh, as a glaze. And like the um, the Vallejo, the uh, Model Air, it works really well for this. Or um, you could use like contrast paints. You know, like it's it's basically just like a densely pigmented wash. But what I also don't want to do is I don't want to let it pool um, in recesses. So I'm just going to kind of use my brush to like make sure that I'm drawing it uh, to like highlight kind of surfaces. 
because I don't want it to pull in the cracks as this is like gonna be a highlight and I, want, I don't want it to be a shadow. I don't want it to be a khaki shadow. I want it to be like a, um, a highlight. So I'm just gonna make sure that I don't let it pull in the cracks and recesses and you know, brush it around and uh, make sure that it doesn't end up in the shadows, just in the highlights. Next, I'm gonna come in with some Vallejo uh, game color. And this is, you know, much more like heavy body, um, opaque, thicker acrylic paint than the, uh, the so to me it goes uh, Vallejo Game Wash, Vallejo Game Ink, uh, Model Air, and Game Air, and then Game Color as far as like opaqueness and like heavy body. So um, yeah, you I think it works a lot better if you dry brush if you're if you use like more of a heavy body acrylic just because um, it uh, you want those pigments to be kind of strong uh, when you're dry brushing and. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna dry brush my rocks, uh, my my bases, and still keep try and keep some of that blue, some of that moonlight blue in there. And uh, I'm also gonna do the fur in some areas, but again, like focused around the um, kind of focal points, like like hands and uh, faces, and because these guys, you know, like or or weapons if they have like a knife on them. But like these guys, their their might their uh, mouths and their claws are their weapons. So, and you know, I want those to be like focal points on the minis. Next up, I'm gonna come in with some more of that game color wash sepia. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do all of the uh, pants because I want them to look, well, yeah, I want things to look a little dirtier. I think they just look a little bit too clean, like clean uh, khaki pants. And um, this time I'm not worried about it pooling at all because I want it to pool in the shadows and I just, I'm not gonna let it pull on the the tops, like my my highlights. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna do my best to kind of pull it down into places where I want it to be in the shadows. And then if there's any areas on the fur where I really want to like make darken them up and make them look more dingy, I'm gonna put it on there too. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do these guys, uh, their eyes. I want them to have like bright red glowing eyes. So I'm gonna use some P3 uh, Kador Red. And um, the, um, the P3 paints, they're, they're, uh, they're nice because the, the pigments are really dense. So like with stuff like this where it's really tedious, you know, like I'll even like hold my finger, my pinky up against it and then take my brush make sure that I have a really, really good tip and then do like a golf grip where I'm like balancing one hand against the other as I hold the mini. <laughs> but you don't, you know, like the more you're doing this, the, if you're trying to do like multiple coats of this stuff, um, you're, you have a better chance of screwing up. So it's nice to have a nice like opaque paint. So yeah, I'll take my brush and then I'll twist it to make sure that I have a nice tip on there and then I'll put a little dot in there. Now I'm gonna come in with some Vallejo Model Air Dark Brown. And uh, again, like I'm using this more like a filter. Um, I, I don't want like really opaque color. Um, I'm just gonna do some like leather and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get these guys as 
uh, anything that looks like it's supposed to be leather on them and uh, kind of try and keep it do like the opposite of edge highlighting. Like I'm just gonna put it in the uh, little kind of recessed shadow parts and then leave the, um, the highlights around it. And, uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do, use this to kind of put a little bit of a brown filter on the, uh, the bone, on the, uh, the edges of their uh, knives. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the bases before I go on. Um, I was planning on doing like some static grass effects and stuff and like snow, snow stuff. So I was gonna do this first, um, but I'm gonna use a flat uh, brush and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go in and um, do, the, uh, do the bases with the flat. And uh, again, like P3 is just nice because it, it's, it's uh, densely pigmented, it has like good coverage. So it's like one coat and done and you get nice matte black uh, opaque bases. And uh, I decided that I wanted to get rid of a little bit of the coffee staining on the, uh, on the pants, on the khaki. So I'm gonna use some of the, some P3 uh, Thamor Black and I'm gonna go around and kind of like, sort of like half dry brush, half edge highlight on the pants, uh, just in some, some areas where I wanna get rid of the like coffee staining look. But if you use um, opaque paints over your, uh, your like wet blend layer or if you, um, you know, do like some dry brushing, that's a good way to get rid of the coffee staining look of like contrast paints or uh, if just any kind of washes or wet blending. Get rid of all the tide marks and get some like opaque kind of uh, highlights instead of like the washed out kind of desaturated highlights that you get from washes. And uh, I'm gonna come in and do some dry brushing with some of these technical paints, this uh, uh, rack white. Um, Drew's still out on this stuff for me. Like, I can't tell if I like it or not. Um, for like dry brushing, I'm I just, I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm one of those guys where it's like with the Citadel paints, it's kind of hit or miss for me. Like um, the technical paints, there's a lot of technical paints that I like and then there's like some of their regular colors, their base colors or whatever, or I just don't like them. So, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get like teeth and stuff and uh, maybe some like, some of this bone stuff on their, their weapons and then like tippy top kind of highlights, maybe like just some very tippy top highlights on the tops of the fur. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the weapons with some uh, bulk gun metal, which is just like kind of a dark, oily, kind of steel, dark gray, uh, s s desaturated metallic steel color. But, uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna try and edge highlight with it and sort of um, just make, the, make it look like they're slightly reflective and still use my kind of airbrush layer to tell me where the uh, where they're supposed to be reflecting in the moonlight. So that's it. Yeah, pretty quick um, speed paint, but um, yeah, I'm really happy with them. I like them a lot. They uh, definitely fill a, um, fill a spot that I needed in my uh, my mini collection, uh, but I, I really like the, um, the like the blue the the moonlight on them. Uh, they look like they just transformed or something, and uh, yeah. So uh, so anyways, um, thanks for watching, you guys, and uh, welcome all new subscribers, and um, I'll see you soon. More more to come about this campaign. I'm gonna keep uh, painting up guys for this campaign. 
and uh, probably more Frostgrave coming up very soon as well.